At this time, the church bell will be rung for the number of years of life that Brody lived on this earth. Please rise. Your service is printed in the bulletin that was handed out to you. It's also up on the screens. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In holy baptism, Brody was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all of his sin. St. Paul says, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like we're seated for our first hymn.
Let us pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Brody and to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading from Job 14. Man who is born of a woman is few of days and full of trouble. He comes out like a flower and withers. He flees like a shadow and continues not. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response of Psalm is Psalm 139, a portion of it. For you formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our epistle reading from Revelation 7. After this I looked, and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them in his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, Jesus Christ is the firstborn of the dead. To him be glory and power forever. Alleluia. Our holy gospel is from John 14. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We hear our second hymn and sing our second hymn.
Rick and Jen, Mikhaila, Paige, the crew, all of you who are here, we are most definitely facing tribulation right now. As Brody's grandma said to me the other day, it would be understandable if Brody was sick or something, but to have it happen so suddenly, it's just so hard to wrap our heads around. And it should be. I mean, here was a guy who had his life opening up. Another year of school just ended. Brody was looking forward to working for a third year at XU Aviation. And it's obvious that Brody left an impression on them because in their online condolence they wrote, Over the past few years we watched him mature into a fine young man, eager to learn and find his place in the world. Our XU family is now forever changed. I mean, we have our, our memories now in his confirmation and Sunday school days. I remember Brody always being there for his sister as she looked to him for comfort when she was upset. He didn't care what others thought. This was his sister. Instead of get away from me, Brody would smile and talk to Michaela or put a comforting hand on her and all was good again. In confirmation during breaks, while others would talk about sports, which isn't surprising in this area, Brody would talk about his passions. He'd talk about tech and about gaming and about his interest in tink tinkering on projects that was just starting up for him. Rick and Jen shared with me their amazement and how Brody's tinkering was leading him to become a flipper, a trader of adult toys from four-wheelers to a boat. And I understand he was quite successful at it. Examples can be seen right in front of our church. Some of the memories that were shared with me that, that made smiles appear was Brody's tree farm in his truck with all those air freshener trees that were hanging there, right? And then there was just his truck in general, Brody's pride and joy to be in and to be seen in. Very fitting for around here. You know, so many moments that, that you must all have on your minds, those memories of fishing, hanging out, laughing together, and even crying together at a loss of another close friend not that long ago. I mean, who could have imagined that we would be gathering together again to say a painful goodbye far too soon? The future that you look forward to as friends graduating together next year, continuing to grow into adulthood together, working side by side together, those times that you look forward to, they have been stolen by life in this sin-filled and broken world. And I know that, that many, if not all of you, are asking why. You're looking for the ultimate answer, and the ultimate honest answer I can give you is, I don't know. I don't know why God chose not to intervene. He intervenes in so many of our daily dangers and trials and temptations that we face. I don't know why not in this case. And that's the hard part. And I know that for many of you, you're feeling that it's not fair, it's not right, it stinks and it hurts to the core, and you're right to feel that way. Because I feel that way. Death isn't a, a welcomed thing. It's not how God originally planned his creation. Death is an invader, an intruder. It's a robber that steals from us and causes nothing but heartache and sorrow. And I'm sad to say that young or old, rich or poor, man or woman, Death will strike with all its baggage of sorrow and pain and heartache at some point in time in all of our lives. It's a consequence of the fact that we live in a sin-filled and broken world. It's a consequence that our first parents, Adam and Eve, who God said to them after they had eaten from the tree that he had told them not to eat from, he said, by the sweat of your, of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, 
For you are dust, and the dust you will return. In other words, from, from this moment forward, sin is in this world. It is all around us, it is in us, and it attacks us, and we contribute to it with our own thoughts and words and deeds. And so death in, in this life, it is going to result. It's no clearer than in this moment as we see Brody's casket. Now, this reality, this being the case, what do we do? How do we handle our grief? How do we handle future losses? Well, remember I started by Jesus saying, in the world you will have tribulation. But Jesus finished that sentence with, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And because of that, I am telling each and every one of you that God promises that the Lord is near to the brokenhearted. And he saves the crushed in spirit. You see Rick and Jen and Kyle and Paige, you guys who are the crew, all of you who are here, that's God's promise in this moment that you do not face any of this alone. Make no mistake about it. The Lord God Almighty, the one who's in control of all things, the Lord God who created the heavens and the earth, the Lord who is all-powerful and is all-knowing, He knew Brody. And He knows each one of you. And He knows your hurts in this moment. David reminded us in the psalm, For you formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Your eyes saw my unformed substance, and in your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me when as yet there was not none of them. See, God knew Brody. The Lord called him by name in holy baptism, claimed him as his child and an heir of heaven. And the Lord was with Brody as he entered paradise. God knew Brody, and he knows you, and he does know our allotted times in this life. And that He is with us every step of the way through those moments, even and especially in the painful ones. And He allows it to unfold as He knows. God may allow it, but at the same time, God is still surrounding us with His love, with His care, and with His comfort. God never leaves. We might walk away in sin and doubt, even if it's just for a time, but not Him. God holds on to us in His loving care. He calls out to us. He draws us back. He draws us close to Him. And you know, the best example that I can think of, it's an overwhelmingly painful memory for many of you, but especially for you, Rick. You see, after the accident, Rick shared with me that as he was holding Brody, as he was slipping away, he said he looked at him. And you know, I said to you, Rick, I said to you, Jen, at that time, after the great time that you were having, as life was coming to a close, what comfort it must have been for Brody to have his dad holding him, and the memories and the joy of the day on his mind. You see, Brody wasn't alone in the end, but he was held in love. And I tell all of you this painful memory because this is how our Heavenly Father is with each one of us. His love surrounds His children. God surrounds us richly and daily, and He continually, in His loving arms, that's where we are. And He does comfort us. He does strengthen us. He does forgive us of all of our sins and our repentance. And as the Apostle Paul proclaimed, we can hold on to it the same certainty. He said, For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I mean, this is the confidence that he had that nothing, 
Nothing can separate believers in Christ Jesus as their Lord and Savior from His love. And you see, it is this love that sent God's Son in to be born into this sin-filled and broken world for us. I'm sure all of you know these words. You've heard them at some point in time in life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. You see, it was this love that continued in Jesus' life. As He lived for us, and then as He suffered and died on a cross at Calvary, to pay for all of our sins of thought and word and deed and full. All that would threaten to condemn us. And with that payment of his lifeblood that was given and shed, Jesus, he says that he holds out forgiveness. And he opens the kingdom of heaven to all who would repent and believe. And the result? Well, the result for Brody, the result that's held out for us, while this life does draw to a close what believers experience, the scripture is clear. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of living water. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. In heaven we're told, we're told that nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Thanks to Jesus, we know that our citizenship as believers is in heaven. And from it we do await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And He has promised that He will transform our lowly bodies to be like His glorious body. By the power that enables him to subdue and, and subject all things to himself. And finally, God tells us about heaven. He says, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. You know, Jesus, he promised believers. He said, I give them eternal life, and he says, they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. And you know, Brody knew this. He knew this and he professed his faith in front of me, in front of God's church, and in front of God himself, right in this spot. In 2018, when he was confirmed, he professed his faith. And the result is that while Brody's 17 years of life, while they were good, while they were great, and while they were an honor and a joy to share with him, what he lives now... It is beyond compare. And it does bring true joy to a believer's heart to know that a loved one is at rest with the Lord. And you see, this promise, it's held out for each one of you. Along with the promise that believers will see one another again. We will see Brody again in that inheritance that's imperishable and undefiled and unfading that is kept in heaven for us, thanks to Jesus. So Rick and Jen, Michaela and Paige and the crew, all of you who are here, we do remember Brody and we thank God for our all too short time with him. Today there is no doubt that we mourn and we're going to continue to mourn in the days and the years to come. I want to invite all of you that as you do, know that you're not alone in any of this broken life world. Jesus is here to be clung to in faith. He is going to see you through your days. He is going to provide people in your lives to support and walk with you. And He is going to be with you 
as he was and is now eternally with Brody. So look to Jesus. Find the comfort and strength and that peace like a river in him. That peace that's going to see you through your days and into eternity. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding and we need so much today, be with us now and forever. Amen. At this time, we'll have our prayers, and I would invite everyone to rise for prayer. Let us pray to the Lord our God and Father, who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption, to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to the family of Brody and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrows on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to the bereaved, that within the communion of your church they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. O Lord, by this sudden death of Brody, you have shown that your thoughts are not our thoughts, nor your ways our ways. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers at the death of Brody, whose life has passed so quickly, that in our deep sadness we may remember how short our earthly, earthly pilgrimage is and seek those things that are above where Jesus is seated. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks for Brody and for all the blessings you bestowed on him in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home, that with him we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to life. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. 
Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with the certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated as we as we sing our final hymn. Robert Phelps, 
was born on June 14, 2005 as a gift of God to Rick and Jennifer Phelps. Brody was then born a second time through the water and the word of holy baptism on September 11, 2005 at Zion Lutheran Church Dashwood, officiated by Reverend John Tremulak. On May 20, 2018, Brody publicly professed his Christian faith in the presence of Pastor John and the family of Zion. At that time, a special scripture passage chosen by Brody to remind him of the Lord in his life was read from Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Brody then received the precious gift of the Lord's life, giving body and blood in Holy Communion. God blessed Brody's life with family and many special people. As well, Brody was given the talents and skills to serve God, family, and others in his various vocations. Finally, on June 29, 2022, at the age of 17, Brody was called home to rest in the arms of Jesus to await the resurrection of the dead. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give thanks to God our Father through Jesus Christ our Lord for our brother Brody. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Amen. If you are, just a couple of things. If you are going to be going to the cemetery, if you're not familiar, just right at the end of the, you'll be following the procession. Right at the end of the street here is Brunson. You just go north about a mile, a mile and a quarter or so out there. Uh, on the right side is the cemetery. Uh, please, if you, if you have a bulletin, bring it with you because the committal that we'll do at the cemetery uh, comes from that, so I invite you to make sure you have one. If you didn't get one, and want to take it, get one on your way out there, there as well. Now, before we process out, uh, there's been requests for a couple people to give a brief uh, discount or a brief talk, so at this time, Colin's going to come up and talk about that. You can go right here, Colin, if you'd like. Good afternoon, and first and foremost, Pastor John, thank you very much for your words and for being along this family side in the last couple of days. Not the task that any of us gathered here would want to have. So thank you for being there for them. We very much appreciate it and certainly appreciate the hospitality of your church and your congregation here in this space today. I am honored to have been asked by Brody's family to share a tribute here this afternoon as we all try to come to terms with this unbearable <coughs> loss. I will be up front with the fact that my words are most certainly going to prove inadequate to fully capture this young man's life. I could not possibly articulate how much Brody meant to each and every one of you that have gathered here today in person or are joining us on the live stream today. There will simply never be another Brody Phelps or Birdie or Broadster, Brody Man, Bruiser, or whatever you may have affectionately called this young man. Before I start to share, I think that Brody would want me to also acknowledge his good friend here. He want us to remember him here today. I can only imagine the catching up that these two have been doing over the last week as Brody has also been connecting with his family who have gone before him. I have no doubt that he was greeted with open arms. To the young men and the young women that are gathered here today, these are not the experiences that you're supposed to have when you're teenagers. I am so sorry for your tragic loss. However, please hold the incredible memories that you have close in your hearts. Chase your own dreams. Build your own relationships. 
and live your, wife, your life in a way that would make these young men proud. None of us have any idea what tomorrow may bring. Yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, and today is a gift, and that's why they call it the present. I can share with everyone gathered here today that Brody's four-wheeler is absolutely the largest piece of memorabilia we have ever squeezed into one of our funeral homes. The markings that it left on our wallpaper <laughs> and our door frames will provide us with a lasting memory and a reminder of his love for big, fast, and of course, loud. Brody loved his toys. His four-wheelers, boats, go-karts, dirt bikes, snowmobiles, pickups, anything with an engine, and he was interested. As much as he enjoyed driving around all of these things, he also loved the wheeling and the dealing. Finding a bargain, a little smooth talking to get a better deal, and then he would bring it home fix it up to become top-notch, drive the heck out of it, and then sell it for a profit, only to move on to something bigger and better. Often having a couple of different projects on the go at any one time. It's hard to imagine for me that a 17-year-old could have had at least six different four-wheelers that people can remember, and such a nice truck out front. A nice truck that he bought at 15, no less. Always taking pride in every single one of his purchases. It wasn't just the toys, but it was also the boys from the crew. All of them were so enjoyable to hang out with, have campfires with, tell lies with, and go fishing, and of course, in good old Huron County fashion, just touring around in your pickup truck. When Brody wasn't tinkering in the garage, he was working. Proud to have just completed his grade 11 at South Huron High School, he was so excited to get back out into the workforce, where he truly felt he belonged. This would have been his third summer working with XU Aviation alongside his dad. He had a goal to one day become an aviation mechanical engineer, and I think that we can all agree that he would have excelled in that profession. He somehow managed to balance two jobs last summer, fixing planes through the day and selling gas by night and on the weekends. After keeping up his job at Canco through the school year, his Aunt Tammy often suggested that she was going to have to hit him up for a loan one day because he was rolling in dough. Yesterday, as I was swinging the door at the funeral home, so nice to hear more than one teacher, your principal, speak so kindly about this young man. I'm not sure that my teachers and principal would have spoken so nicely about me at that time. <laughs> but more important than any of his hobbies, more important than any of his possessions, were of course his family. And at this time, if I could kindly ask her grandma, ask Belinda to come forward. She's going to do her best to share. I'm going to try to get through this without crying. I've cried so much, I think I'm dehydrated. <laughs> Brody was my hero. He would always do anything for me. He had a great time back in May. He texted me on a Thursday around 10.15 saying, can we go to Sarnia tonight? I text, him, I text back, why? He said to drive. I said to him to call me on his lunch. When he called, he told me that he should go to Sarnia to drive the course so he could get the test for his G2 the next Thursday. When I picked up at school in the parking lot, he told me to correct him on any of his bad points due to the fact I had a defensive driving course, driving bus. Off we went and drove around. When we took me out, then he took me out to supper. 
not knowing the target too good, we saw it in Chuck's Roadhouse, where he said, let's try it. I've never been there. I said, I've never been there. It was a good fun. Brody wanted to go back on Saturday to practice more. So we had a return trip early Saturday morning. The next Thursday, he got his G2 license. He called me first thing and said, Grandma, we did it. The next time I wrote with him, I would tell him that if he didn't get something wrong, he told me, Grandma, the test is over. <laughs> and I said, okay, Brody. I said, I love you, Brody. You're with Poppy in heaven. Give him a bear hug for all of us still here. Until we meet again, all the best. We sent a six pack of Canadian with Grandpa, Papa. So enjoy one on Papa. Thank you. Well done, Linda. I love you, Brody. Linda popped in. I've known Linda my entire life, and I've known Jen almost as long. And uh, Linda popped in to see me one day at the funeral home. I was out and about. And I think she might have been more excited for Brody getting his license than what he was. <laughs> she was beaming. It was such a proud moment. And I had to guess if I knew anything about Brody, he likely had seen all that practice. He was likely a good driver and already out of the gates. Now, uh, next up, I'm going to ask. Right, if you're going to come forward and say a few words. Family does indeed come in all shapes and sizes. For Brody, I'm sure that was his crew, his girlfriend, his mom and dad, his little sister, his grandparents, aunt, uncles, cousins, and yes, even his dogs, especially Diesel, whom he bought with his very own money. Of course, of course, the relationships for all of us, they're not easy. 
They never go perfect every day, and they all require time and energy. I ask that you allow yourself some forgiveness, if not every single day was perfect. Perfect is simply unachievable. Brody loved all this family, and regardless of what might have been going on in his own life, he was always willing to drop everything to be there. This was true a week ago Sunday when Grandma Linda and Gary were in a car accident, or when he delivered her a plant and a cheesecake after 10 o'clock on her birthday. I'm sure that each of you can recall various times in your lives that Brody was there. Whether it was showing up at your door on a PA day with a box of donuts, perhaps it was taking you out for dinner at the growling gear back of the bed, or perhaps when he made you laugh on a family camping trip, or maybe he shared one of his midnight snacks of burgers, jalapeno poppers, <laughs> bacon wrap sass, and sausages, all served after 10 p.m. Well, he was proud of all the roles that he played from son to grandson, boyfriend, etc. Perhaps the one that suited him most. Kyla, your big brother loved you very, very much. And while he may have said regularly, not my kid, not my problem, <laughs> he would have surely done anything in his power to protect and to support you. Who else would help you overcome your fear of loud noises by, of course, introducing you to donuts on a floor? <laughs> well, your big brother will absolutely never be replaced. You have an entire church here full of people that you can now count on to help fill his shoes and support you in your journey. That same sentiment goes to each and every one of you. This loss, the loss of Brody Phelps, is too much for you to bear on your own. Let's say that again. The loss is too much for you to bear on your own. You cannot do it. You will need to rely on each other to make it through tomorrow, next week, and next month. They say grief diminished. Grief shared is grief diminished. None of you are going to get through this loss. It's not the way that it works. Together, though, you can cope. And one day you will be able to cherish the others. In conclusion, as I wrap up my tribute to this young man, all week I've been thinking about engines. They seem to go hand in hand. And what I can tell you is I am far better at breaking engines than I am fixing them. But what I do know is that an engine is made up of various parts and various functions. An engine cannot function without a spark, fuel, and air. It is when these three things come together, the magic of combustion, Think about this for a moment. Think about Brody for a moment. Think about your own lives for a moment. Just like an engine, you cannot focus on one thing. There needs to be balance. Brody know, knew how to work hard, have fun, love those around him, continue to learn, and when all of these things came together, you could see that side smirk. That side smirk smile, something you will never forget. In Brody's memory, I encourage each of you to go forward from this place today and live your life not focusing on only one or two aspects of your life, but everything that made life truly living, which will allow you to create a legacy which may one day shine as brightly as this young man's. They say it is not the years in your life that count, but rather the life in your years. Brody Phelps will not be forgotten. Brody Phelps will not be forgotten. At this time, we'll rise as we process.